On today's Idaho 4 investigative episode, we are going to take a deeper dive into the crime scene house. We are going deeper on the Banfield boys, more red flags, stalking, and more. Now, without further ado, let's see what I have to say for myself this time. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. Let's talk about donations. Why was the crime scene house donated to the University of Idaho, which is a for-profit organization? Crazy. One business donated the million dollar home to another business. Why wasn't it donated to the victim's families? Why wasn't it donated to the surviving roommates, Dylan and Bethany? Certainly they could have used the housing. These girls were all paying tenants of that residence and they became victims. They signed a lease and they were paying a man named Dan in Colorado. So why haven't the victim's families received anything? What? Nothing. What? Ethan's brother received a scholarship. Why haven't the surviving roommate girls received scholarships? What is going on in this case? Is there anything fair in this life? No. Apparently not. Because one business shouldn't be able to donate a very expensive item to another business. And you know that's true. Something shady went on behind the scenes. And all we can do is sit behind our little screens and say it's us to us. Boom! That's how I feel about the victim's families not receiving that house. Most of the victim's family members want that house to stay. And the ones that don't, it's us. And that's all I'm going to say about that for now. But seriously, think about it. Dylan and Bethany survived the door slasher experience. They should be given something. Yeah. I know, a lot of you think they might be involved. The whole eight hour delay calling 911. It's suspicious, yeah. But the police say they've been eliminated. But nobody's said the police has been eliminated. Oh my God. Yeah. And that's all I'm going to say on that for now because my investigation is still ongoing into that. And speaking of that, let's talk about the picture that was taken of Kaylee's ID one more time. And we're gonna even go deeper this time. Ticket, right? Yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. That being said, warnings, don't do it again. Yep. I'd hate to come back in a few hours and a half for issue. So, yeah. any questions for me? No. Uh, warnings, don't do it again. Yep. Most of you out there knew that was creepy, that was weird, and that could be considered stalking. A handful of you out there were kind of confused. You said that's normal operating procedure, nothing out of the ordinary. Okie dokie, smoky, you get the buzzer on that one. How would you feel if you knew the police weren't even called out to 1122 King Road on that afternoon? What? No, they were called out to 1127 King Road where the actual party was happening. Okay, we well, one thing I will tell you is we didn't do anything last night. No worries. Na uh, neighbors are calling in again saying we need to see Sure. Sounds, Sounds good. good. That being said, the tickets get expensive. We gotta come back out here and then, you know, the music keeps coming up and needs to be called. So Understand that. Yeah, we'll definitely turn it down. I mean, you're you're probably right. off, maybe like very low volume. But okay. we'll yeah, 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 you can have a party. You can have some music. Just not loud enough for people to phone in saying, hey. Sounds good. No worries. Yeah, we should have. Uh, I know we were gonna go talk to them before. But yeah, maybe do a, a lap with your neighbors. Yeah, we'll push that next time. That's a good idea. You live here? That's where all the students were. That's where all the boys and girls were. 1122 King Road looked like a ghost town. Nobody was even there except Kaylee's little boy toy with the wire ties. But we'll get to that. Back to 1127. Nobody had pictures of their IDs taking at that party. But I thought it was normal. Nope. Nobody had their pictures taken. And how about the Banfield boys? Their photo IDs weren't taking pictures of either. Okay, so likely what's going to happen because you're all underage. And BK didn't have pictures of his ID taken either. Hello, Hello sir. I am 
Officer Loingus stops being audio and video recorded. I think, I, know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, so I, was I was behind you the whole left. time. Yeah. Yeah. So technically you're not supposed to enter the intersection at all for that reason, because if the light turns red, then you're stuck in the intersection, and then you're on the red light. So Only Kaylee's was. And Kaylee's name is the only one that shows up on the Freedom of Information Act that somebody requested on December 15th. This is a guessing show, but I bring more facts than any other true crime channel on the planet, and you know that's true. There's like three people in the world with six accounts each that doubt me, the rest of you, I love you forever. Thank you so much for being here. Seriously, just think logically. Is it normal or isn't it normal for a police officer to take a picture of Kaylee's ID? Hmm. In Moscow, Idaho, it's not normal. We've seen body cameras of other police interactions with other people, and none of them had their pictures taken. So that's a red flag. You know it is. And some people have even told me Kaylee was on some type of list with Moscow PD because she had reported a missing person at Walmart. Yeah, that's in the police files. I've never discussed that, but I can in the future if you want me to. Some people have said Kaylee was a real sleuth. Well, I'm a sleuth too, so rest in peace, Kaylee. So anyways, the Banfield boys. How about this guy with the sunglasses? The police officers never even asked him to take off his sunglasses or asked him why he was wearing sunglasses at 3 a.m. All of us are wondering, why is he wearing sunglasses? The police officers didn't even ask. They were too concerned with, You're guilty. Here's your ticket. They didn't do the typical eye test like we saw them do on Chloe. The eye test that went on way too long. And Chloe didn't even seem intoxicated. Put your feet together for me. Yes, Hands sir. down by your side. Can you see my light right here? I can. Okay. You, you just go ahead and put your hair behind your face. Yes, there sir. you go. All right, what color is my light? Red. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this red light from side to side. What I want you to do is focus on the red light, follow it with your eyes and your eyes only without moving your head. Yes, sir. Okay? Tip your chin down just a little bit for me. There you go. Okay, you relax. You said it's Chloe? Yes, sir. Chloe, I'm seeing some things in your eyes that's going to be a little concerned as far as your level of sobriety. It seems like a lot of these police officers are determined to write you up for alcohol offenses, even though they should mind their own business because most people aren't even intoxicated. The police report said from 50 feet away that they could tell these boys were underage and intoxicated. Well, newsflash, these boys don't look underage. They look at least 30. And yeah, even if they are under 21, they still look over 30. That's my opinion. If you have a different one, I'd love to hear your opinion because maybe I'm just bad at guessing ages based on vision. I'd say they're 32 years old each. 
you let me know what you think. And I'd also like to know a little something extra for personal purposes. Is age just a number? Please do let me know down below. Thank you. Apparently the officers felt like they were in their teens. Ha ha! I'm not buying it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really not. I believe something much more sinister is involved in this whole scenario because this is the exact same time that Kaylee and Maddie were frantically calling Jack decor. And that's why I got rid of the smoke on this show because the information that I'm uncovering is super serious and super scary. There's no need for the extra theatrics. Yeah, they're watching these videos. Yeah, they'd like to see me inside of a cage or eliminated. Do you think they can find me all the way up in Canada? I hope not. Always remember, the 2A is to protect the first A. Yeah, yeah. And if you know, you know. And speaking of the Banfield boys, they were stopped in the middle of the band field, and then they were transported by these undercover thugs over to the fire hydrant right over here. And I previously showed you that's where allegedly Maddie's jacket was found. Somebody's jacket was found there. On the afternoon of November 13th, when police were searching for evidence, two police officers found this jacket at the fire hydrant directly where the Banfield boys were with those undercover officers. The officers that found Maddie's alleged jacket picked it up, looked at it, and tossed it back down like it was trash. That jacket was not trash. I believe it was Maddie's jacket. That's my opinion on this guessing show. We've seen pictures of Maddie in that jacket. We've seen video of Maddie in that jacket at the grub truck. Yeah, it looks like an exact match. 99.9% .9 exact identical. Yeah. yeah. This isn't rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. You can look at Maddie's jacket and then you can look at the jacket near the fire hydrant. It looks the same and you don't know if it's not the same because it was never tested. It should have been tested. You know that's true. How about the three unidentified male DNAs found at the crime scene? Did they do genealogy tree testing on those DNAs? Hmm. We do wonder, because we haven't heard any other names. There should be other named suspects in this case if they did any type of tree testing on those DNAs. Was it the boy with the zip ties on his wrist? Was that Kaylee's boy toy? What was he doing there? And what was Kaylee doing to him? We must ask ourselves what kind of weird kink was going on inside that house. And I'm not asking for a friend. This is for investigative purposes. This investigation is serious, and a lot of you need to start taking this investigation a lot more serious. Yeah, you do. This isn't for views, this isn't for clicks, this isn't for your LOL. This is for justice. For Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, and Ethan. Rest in peace. And it really seems like they can't rest in peace with the circus that the media and police department have created in this case. And even certain YouTubers have made a mockery of the true evidence that we've uncovered. Speaking of true evidence, let's check out the Linda Lane footage. We can see a vehicle that does passes at least three or four times on this footage. This seems to line up exactly with what they say in the PCA, the probable cause affidavit to arrest Brian Koberger. Some people are convinced this is a Hyundai Elantra. I'm not so convinced and you're not so convinced either. And sometimes certain creators are just wrong. No matter how many times they slander me, no matter how many little animations they make, no matter how rude they are to their own audience, they're just wrong. And that's why we're gonna take our own look at the Linda Lane footage with our own animation. Let's do some overlays. We're gonna find out exactly whose car this is right here and right now, allegedly. 
as I'm sure most of you recall, the undercover officers were driving a hybrid Ford Fusion. And they say they were driving a hybrid Ford Fusion to save gas money. But that doesn't even make sense because hybrid cars cost more money, the batteries don't last that long, and the batteries cost more to replace than the car's even worth. Anyways, I don't think anybody else has done this, so I'm going to do it. I'm usually the first, just like when I said BOOM. I was the first with that too. So check out the car on the screen. We're taking the undercover police officer car and we're putting it on top of the Linda Lane footage. Let's see if it lines up. Let's see if it's a match. I'm going to mess with the opacity. I'm going to lower it. I'm going to raise it. I'm going to place the image on top of the video and you're going to watch, observe, witness, behold. You're going to see what I see. Just like when I showed you Brent Kopaka's eyeball. That was scary what we saw in Brent Kopaka's eyeball. You know it was. And that wasn't even photoshopped or anything. That was directly off Brent Kopaka's Facebook page. That's something he uploaded. So if he photoshopped some creepiness into it, well, that's on him. But apparently, I see you too. That's what he said. Anyways, let's get back to this car. Is this a match? Yeah. Is this cop car the car that we see on Linda Lane? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this isn't rocket science. That car is a match. I've previously been referred to as Lord Drip Drop because I own a little piece of land in Scotland. But maybe now you can also call me the true crime animation king because I've got some pretty good animations right here at Crime Circus. And you know that's true. So to anybody that's filled with rage or misery and you cry each and every single time you come to the circus, shout out to you. Keep on coming back. Thank you so much. And to anybody dealing with some horrible things today, I hope your day gets better right now. I'm praying for you. I care about you. And I will see you down in the comments. I'm probably the most famous YouTuber in the world that still reads your comments and hearts your comments. And I reply when I can because I'm never too famous for you. This is a loving family here. That's why we call ourselves the Crime Circus Cult. Anyways, anyways, the undercover police officer car lines up, it's a match. And I'm not even surprised because the actions of the car doing passes or loops or whatever it was doing makes perfect sense because that's what police officers do when they're on patrol. And that's what those undercover officers said they were doing, that they were on patrol. It's normal for police officers to be doing passes in parking lots, apartment buildings, strip malls, neighborhoods. That's what they do at 3 a.m. when there's nothing else going on in town. They just patrol the neighborhood. They do loops and passes. That's not something a stalker does. A stalker would never want to lose sight of his infatuation. I mean, that's common sense. It's a big no-no. If you're stalking somebody, you park in their backyard or on the side street and you can get a perfect view into their bedroom window and you never know, they might even be changing inside. If you're just driving around random apartment complexes and up and down Walenta Drive and all throughout the neighborhoods, you're losing sight of the person that you're allegedly stalking. And if you lose sight of what's happening in the house, you're telling me the perpetrator's just gonna go in blindly without having a clue what's happening in there? That whole story sounds like fantasy to me. Alleged stalking, really? Based on 12 cell phone pings in Moscow, Idaho? A reminder. The cell phone pinged in Moscow, Idaho, not in the neighborhood, not near the house, just in Moscow in general. That cell phone could have been anywhere. And even if for some reason he was near the house 12 times in four months, that's considered stalking. That's one visit every one and a half weeks. That's going to be the laziest stalker of all time. A true stalker would be visiting 12 times per day or 12 times per week or even 12 times per month your choice. But 12 times in four months, that's not stalking. 
Even if he was driving directly to the house, maybe he had a legitimate reason. Maybe he was their dealer. Oh my God. We don't know. But Brian Koberger's attorney, Ann Taylor, says her client has no connection to the victims. Some sickos even made fake Instagram accounts pretending to be Brian Koberger and they followed the deceased victims. Yeah, pretty disturbing, but those were not Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger did not follow any of the victims on any social media accounts. That's a fact, because that's what you can get here at Crime Circus. We do a lot of guessing, but I tell you it's a guess. And when it's fact, facts are facts. That's why nobody has ever successfully been able to debate me on a single fact that I say in these episodes, because I do my research more than anybody. All day, every day, and all night too. I don't even sleep much anymore because this case has had me so broken down to pieces, it's hard to even explain. I'll probably never be the same again. You gotta keep in mind, I've been investigating this case for longer than anybody. About 13 months now. It has taken its toll on me, but I'm still here and my supporters are only growing. And I'm so thankful for each and every single one of you that comes here and watches these shows, smashes the thumbs up button, leaves a comment, donates, becomes a member, signs up on Patreon, buys merch in the merch shop. Y'all mean everything to me, for real. And I do have a lot more to discuss, but we're gonna wrap this up. Remember to be kind, spread peace, love, positivity, and kindness. And until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.